It's almost a year since Sarah de Lagarde lost a leg and one of her arms in a freak accident on the London Underground. Well, the mum of two has since become one of the first people in the world to operate a bionic arm powered by artificial intelligence. It works by reading her mind. We're going to speak to Sarah in just a moment. Oh, I'm delighted to say that Sarah Amazing. joins us now. Good morning to you. Good morning. It's so lovely to see you because uh, we interviewed you here on Good Morning Britain back at the end of last year in December, just a few months after it had happened. It's great to have you back today. How are things? Thank you. I'm, I'm really excited to be here because I remember exactly what it felt like to come here. And I was just, yeah, just around Christmas. And I was in a wheelchair when I arrived here and it was really painful for me to walk. I didn't have an arm on the right side. And now I'm back. I walked into the studio and I'm really excited about it's that. Amazing. It's just, it's so special. And, I, you know, I know you were, you were still super positive even then when you were just obviously processing things and going through everything. But we're, we're intrigued by this arm. So talk us through how it works. Gosh, it, it's been a long process to get here. So I started the process back in January. It took all of this time to train, to understand how this arm functions. But the beauty of it is that I, I can think of a movement and the socket is full of electrodes that read muscle movement. And if I twitch my muscles oh. in a sequence, then it translates into a movement. So I think about opening up my hand, it opens up. Wow. If I think about closing my it's hand, it closes. Incredible. So it's literally reading your mind to be able to do that? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there is no chip inserted in my brain for that, but it is a combination of thinking, acting, and then translating into these impulses that allow me to make it, those movements. It's so amazing. And, you know, for you to be a world first, I, I, just to say, for people of my generation, in the 70s, there was a TV programme called The Six Million Dollar Man, Steve yeah. Austin. <laughs> we can rebuild him. It was a version of the Marvel uh, Bionic Man idea. And it was science fiction, the idea that we could actually make a person be rebuilt in this way. And it's actually happening. Your mind is controlling your bionic arm. I mean, science fiction embodied in you becoming reality. It's amazing. It's amazing. And, I, you know, the reason why I'm happy to talk about it so much is because I feel that there isn't a lot of um, understanding about how it works and how far the technology has come. And I'm, I'm, you know, part of me is still dealing with the loss of limbs, of which obviously is, is terrible. But the other part of me is really excited about yeah. discovering all of these technologies, this innovation, I think that's really mm. exciting in a way because, I mean, at the moment, it's trying to replace what I've lost, yes. but the idea is that perhaps at some point it will enhance what I have. You are the world's first Barnet woman. Well, <laughs> it's amazing. What a thing. <laughs> what a thing. But it is incredible. There's a lot of talk, isn't there, though, about artificial intelligence. People have issued warnings about where it could lead to, but when you see it in a situation like this, where actually the technology is able to help you, is able to actually, you know, recreate normal movement for you. It's, it's a real gift, isn't it? It is. And for, for every great discovery, there's always a positive aspect to it. But then, you know, if it's misused, then obviously that, that could be dangerous. But in this, in this situation, the, the setup of it, it collects data continuously and layer upon layer, it starts learning the movements that I make more, most often, and, you know, it, it helps me complete those movements. We can see it's so amazing. it's easier. We saw you in the film with your husband and um, uh, kind of the coffee cup and the hug when he came in. You've also got two um, children. Are there things you can now do which you thought, when you were last on the programme, might never be possible for you with your kids? And what do they think of having a barnic mum? <laughs> well, they think it's, it's, it's kind of cool. <laughs> and I think the, the, the part that they enjoyed the most is the realisation that I can take it off at night and yeah. plug it in to charge, just like an iPhone. <laughs> they find that very funny. Um, they also thought it was um, great to have me present at their school. And right. so they introduced me to their classmates as my mum's a robot. Aww. See, mums and dads are supposed to be embarrassing. Yeah. You are not only the first the cool world's mom, first bionic so. mum, you're actually a cool mum. That's yeah. really unusual. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, but yeah, it's, it's been a long 
journey for them as well. Obviously, you know, the accident in itself was quite shocking, um, and I was very worried about their mm. psychological acceptance of this mm. and whether they would be traumatised. But actually, yeah. children are so resilient, and Amazing. really quickly they realised, OK, this happened, but there is help, and these prosthetic limbs are going to be supportive. It turns out you're pretty resilient as well. I mean, to have come through... It's, this, it's, it's, it's less than a year ago yeah. that this all happened. A terrible, terrible accident. And, um, and for you to be where you are now... And you had to crowdfund for, to pay for this, didn't you? That's right, yes. So I guess it comes down to the personality that I have. It's like I wasn't prepared to wait um, two to three years even longer to make this happen. It, for me, it was, you know... It needed to happen fast because, in my head, I mm. wanted to hug my children with two arms, and that was the driver, and I said... What was it like the first time you did that? It was amazing, but a bit scary. Because <laughs> I didn't want to crush them. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> the, if you're not the controlling other your bionic arm, it could, it, could, it could have a will of its own. The teacher to be gentle at the same time. Yes, exactly. <gasps> yeah. And what about, you know, I know... You've had so much to deal with, haven't you, to come to terms with in all of this. I know it's, it's sort of changed your perspective on life, what's important. How do you feel now about, in a sense, what difference it's made to you because of what's happened? I think it, it opened up my eyes, first of all, into a world that I had n no real idea of how it worked and all of a sudden I'm part of this exclusive club that no one wants to be part of and that's you know, the amputee club. And now, going from being able to climbing Kilimanjaro in August last year, literally being on top of the world, and then all of a sudden not being able-bodied anymore, all of a sudden I was disabled. And mm. so that is quite difficult to come mm. to grips with. But the resilience comes from the fact that I can't change it. These limbs are not going to grow yeah. back. And I really want to enjoy my life. I know what it feels like when you're about to die. And... Now I'm, I'm, I've got a fresh perspective and saying, I'm here, I just really want to, you know, enjoy. It's, it's important just to... Cos we're all used to seeing athletes with prosthetic limbs. Johnny Peacock, the um, gold medal-winning runner for, for Britain. But this is different, isn't it? This isn't simply being mechanical, which is what we, we know about. You're actually... Just to explain this again, you're controlling your, the movement of your fingers with your brain. Yes. And it, and it really works in stages, so it's not as fluid as your, the way you use your hand, which is really innate. I'm, I'm moving my hand now, I'm not even thinking about it. But I have to break that movement down and think, OK, on this side of my body, I have to think the movement first, then instruct the muscles to you know, make that combination of twitches that equates to the movement that the hand does. And do the experts say, you know, we all know about AI and it could become, you know, it could learn itself. Do the experts say that you will learn over time? So in the end, your brain will be able to operate your right arm in the same way as your left arm without you having to think at all? That's the idea, really. It's that, you know, over time and with, you know, the continued usage of it, now, I've... I've only really used it for two weeks now. So two weeks? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so and you can early. do all of that. Yeah. But we, I had loads of training before on a virtual, you know, on an app, on an app. And what's your goal with your right arm? What's the thing you would love in five years' time to be able to do? Ah, oh, that's a really good question. Um, I guess everything, <laughs> everything that I used to a do. Tennis before. ball. Tennis ball. Play ping pong against my kids. See if I win. Yeah. Do the experts say that could be possible? I think so. Yes. That would be Drive amazing. Drive a car, perhaps, if that's That'd be allowed. Amazing. You know? Do you ever worry though that if you think something, your arm might start doing it? I mean, maybe if you saw your favourite actor or TV presenter or something, and before <laughs> you'd even thought, you'd reached out to hug them, I grabbed well. them. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think at this stage. No, because. As I said, there is a, there is a delay, That's a right. lag between what I think and... We're all worried about AI taking control. Maybe your arm will take control. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, it's I an amazing story. So. Thank you so it's much for giving... It's great to see it's you. It's so optimistic and hopeful and such a terrible, terrible thing. You've, you, you've been a pioneer. It's amazing. It will give lots of people lots of hope. Thank you so much. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks, Sarah. Brilliant.